Hi Fallout friends, it is that time of the week again. I am going to be using this Captain Jack's Dead Bug. It's the organic pesticide for a ton of um, pest insects, um, including uh, worms, caterpillars, thrips, uh, beetles, borers, bagworms, loopers, leaf miners, spider mites, tent caterpillars, and thrips. I said thrips a couple times. So anyway, I showed you guys this machine the other day, but I didn't show you show me using it. I was just putting it together and talking about why I was using it. So I thought I'd show you uh, how I use it. This will be my third time using it. I used it for uh, fertilizer. I used it for neem oil, and now I'm using it for Captain Jacks. So this is a four gallon spray backpack sprayer and the instructions on here says for every gallon you use two ounces which is four tablespoons so i used this before so i want to make sure that i have enough so i'm going to be using three gallons so three gallons times four is 12 tablespoons so how you use this is you just open this up right here and there's a filter right here so that nothing goes in and clogs up your sprayer so open up the dead bug and I only poked a little bit of a hole in the top so it doesn't um, spray like crazy. So I'm gonna use 12 tablespoons. One, two. Well, there's only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit left. Okay, so this stuff you're not supposed to use when pollinators are out. So it says on the package that pollinators can, um, will, die if they are exposed to this within three hours of application. So I don't know if you could tell, but it's, it's late now. And I just went over, there's nothing out. Plus these um, spray my dahlias, which are not blooming. So there's no pollinators over by them. So I put the solution in first and then I fill the water up. That way I don't have to shake it up. It mixes itself when I'm filling up with water. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up to three gallons. Okay, three gallons. Now, if you didn't see my previous video, the reason that I got this because I have the one gallon pump sprayer and it was taking me forever. The amount of crops that I have, I have six, 50, 60 feet long row of dahlias, 575 plants of dahlias. And then I have rows of other things. I've got rows of sunflowers. I've got rows of other cut flowers. Just probably, I don't even know, dozens of rows of, of flowers. and. I was having to stop and come back and fill the one gallon up multiple times and it was just really a pain in the butt. So what did I end up doing was I got this. It wasn't that expensive. I think it was around $70 on Amazon and I had it shipped right to my house. And I've used, like I said, this will be my third time. Super easy to use. It's a continuous spray, continuous spray. So you're pumping it while you're spraying so you don't have to stop, pump, and then spray. I'll show you. <laughs> So it is a bit heavy when it's full of three gallons of water. Well, a gallon of water weighs what? Like a gallon of water weighs what? Eight pounds. So what I do, it's got, uh-oh, strap came undone. I forgot that this happened before. It just snaps right back in. Okay. All right. So I lift it up to put the strap on. And the other strap and then it goes in the middle and secures right here so this is the sprayer and this is the pumper so you see how easy that is and then I'm gonna go over to the fields and start spraying. Okay, so here I have a freshly weeded row of dahlias. I've been spending a lot of time making sure my dahlias are weeded. I did not put landscape fabric down. So I'm just gonna pump this up and I can feel the pressure building both in my arm and in my back. Okay, so pressure is up and this thing is amazing. I'm gonna make sure I get nice and in there good because I've been seeing the pincher bugs the earwigs land and they're like living right in. So my pressure is starting to loosen. I'm pumping it and walking at the same time. Okay. 
you can see those moths come flying out. Okay, so I wanna reiterate. It's eight o'clock at night here. There are no bees out. They have gone to bed. I've checked all of my blooming things. There's nothing out right now. So three hours after you spray this, it will kill bees. So make sure you're not doing this in the morning. Make sure you're doing this in the evening, okay? Even if it's dark outside. The first time I did it, it was dark outside. Right now, it's eight o'clock at night and everything has gone to bed. So it's safe to do it now. Three hours after it will kill pollinators, so make sure, please don't do it in the morning. You don't wanna kill your bees. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row. Okay, so I only showed you me doing one row, but I was able to do three rows and now my tank is empty. Um, that is a lot less than I did the other day. So I was able to do all six rows with four gallons, but what I did this time was I really soaked it because I noticed some earwigs living in, like in the, the V's of, of the plant, in the crotches of the plant, I guess, if you will. I was trying to avoid saying crotches, but so anyway. So the earwigs are living in the crotches of the plant and uh, it's driving me nuts. So I wanted to make sure that I hit them extra hard today. And this is all also the tarnished plant bug, the Japanese beetle, and those moths are all over. And I don't have any dahlias yet. I have a lot of buds and I don't want to risk losing my dahlias. I mean, they're, they're a big crop for me. So 575 plants, I'm super excited. Should be soon. There's a couple of buds that are starting to uh, to firm up. So I know my, my CSA customers are looking forward to it. The florist is looking forward to them. I'm very excited. So I'm gonna go back over to the porch and talk to you guys about some of the cool flowers that I'm starting. So these are the gladiolas that I started the other day in the crate. I wanted to show you guys a little bit of an update. So here they are, they're growing beautifully and this crate is ultra portable. So whenever we get close to having a frost, I can just bring it inside. I know I said I was going right to the porch to show you guys stuff, but. <laughs> If you recall, if you watched my video from the other day when I saw the, the very first gladiola spike coming up through, guess what? It is, I'm five foot six. I'm five foot five and three quarters. I'm five foot six. And I would say this is at least four and a half feet tall. And she's yellow. I'm so excited. She's perfect. Anyway, so that is the first gladiola of about, um, I don't know. I can't, honestly, I don't remember. So, you know, you order things. I ordered initially 2,000. So there's at least 2,000. And then I ended up ordering more um, from the wholesale, small, wholesale for the small scale grower. So on um, the Facebook page, which is a really great thing. If you guys don't know about that, check out where my where to buy or where I buy. Cause this is not like, I'm not, teaching you how to do the best way of doing things. I'm just telling you what I do. So Jake operates this page and if you are a small scale grower but you wanna get the wholesale prices, you join his Facebook group and you get it for flower farmers. So I ordered a couple hundred gladiolas from him. Two different kinds, I'm really excited about it. I, I told you guys about this before. One is called, the, it's a green, like a lime green one. And then the other one is called sunshine, I think. That's what I started in the crate. So that's gonna be the late one because I want those fall colors for the late, so. Woohoo! And I have, I think I have 500 more in the crate as well to start. I didn't start them yet. I'm gonna start them this week. After grocery pickup tomorrow, guys, because if you don't know this, the crates that we get for bulbs yeah, they're perfect for growing in, but they're also perfect to shove in the back of your car and put the groceries in when you do a grocery pickup with this COVID contactless grocery thing and no plastic bags. In New York State, we have a plastic bag ban. Anyway, so they're great for carting around groceries too. So anyway, first gladiola is up. Many more to follow. I think within a couple of days, I'll have several to cut here. I'm gonna cut this one tomorrow morning. Um, you cut gladiola when the first flower on the bottom. Like, actually, I could cut it right now. It's closed, but I can see what color it is. But I'm gonna wait for that first one on the bottom to bloom and cut it. And I don't know, either keep it or give it to someone special. And then before you know it, I'll have so much that my CSA members will be getting them in bouquets. I'll probably be selling them by the bunch. And I'll also be offering them to my local florist. So, so excited. 
Okay, so I have my boxes of seeds here and I have my flower Bible, which is Cool Flowers by Lisa Mason Ziegler. I took her courses. She does a flower farming school. I believe it starts in the fall and uh, she also runs a bunch of other courses. So if you do not know about Lisa Mason Ziegler and your flower farming, look her up. She owns the Gardener's Workshop. She's in Virginia. I believe she's near Newport News, Virginia. She's in zone seven something. And um, she is the i don't know the epitome of a flower farmer she knows everything she loves to share her knowledge this is where i'm learning everything and get her book she has two of them out right now she has cool flowers which talks about how you can winter so like planting now for next year's blooms you have to go by your zone though everything has a different winter hardiness zone and then she also has a book called vegetables love flowers which is not really about vegetables it's about flowers, so don't let the title deceive you. So anyway, I'm looking through um, my reference book from her, which if you do not have this, I have a link down below um, for her book on Amazon. And you can also get it right from her website. It's Gardener's Workshop, I think, .com. And then um, I'm going through looking for what I can winter sow. I am in one of the most northern zones. I'm in zone 4B, upstate New York. My neighbor claims up and down that he's a zone three, but he also has a microclimate. I'm in the middle of a field on top of a hill. I don't really have any tree cover. I'm always warmer here than he is, and I always have a slight breeze. Uh, it's just a little bit different. And then where he is, just 500 feet down the road, he's surrounded by trees, which is a big difference. So he is always a couple degrees colder, even though he's right there. There'll be mornings where he has a frost and I do not. So he won't get anything that's anything higher than a zone three. I will tempt my fate and go. I have some zone five roses that have survived. This was this will be their second year uh, that I'm from, I brought from my old house because I used to live in um, a whole zone more um, higher than we have now. And I brought some plants with me when I when I move. So it's cool flowers that I can grow here. Like I said, 4B, snapdragons, delphinium, snap, snap, more delphinium, uh, yarrow. I can um, winter sow yarrow here because you know what? This is a perennial in my zone. So I can plant this whenever I want. It should come back every year. Um, there are more. Uh, there are more things that I can winter sow. I'm just going through this right now. I, I went through this smaller box and now I'm going through the big box. Foxglove, I could do foxglove because again, that's a perennial here. There's stuff that you absolutely cannot do, which are, um, she also talks about, they're the, um, they're the summer annuals, the summer season, summer season crops. You can absolutely not do that. And um, your zone, zone five, six, seven, eight, wherever you are, you will have different things that you can use as cool flowers. And then in some of this, some of this stuff, like fever few, really that's only winter hardy to a zone five for cool flowers. But she recommends in here that um, it's try it out as zone four. Try it out because it's definitely winter hardy. Use a frost cloth. She goes over it um, every step of the way. You could just use this. I, I reference this book a couple of times a week. I look at it just to get all of my. Oh look, fever few. Feverfew, I've got a bunch of feverfews. So I'm gonna be starting these. Ooh, is, what's? I'm gonna check this out quick. One moment will I reference. Yeah, Larkspur's a zone six. Poo. Ah. I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm, maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll try it. I like to, to push the buttons, I really do. More fever few, more fever few. Dies, okay, all right. So I'm not gonna start these tonight. I have to prep my area where I soil block because it's a hot mess. So what happens in real life is that I had an entire area of my basement set up as a grow room. I have shelves, I have lights, I have um, desk areas, I have dirt, I have everything down there it's literally set up as a grow room once i started to get stuff outside i abandoned it flat out abandonment i should be charged press charges against me it's a disaster there's still dirt on the floor i'm so embarrassed 
So I have to take tonight and a little bit tomorrow. I have to work tomorrow, but, and I have to clean it. I have to clean it because it's just a mess. There's pots knocked over and dirt all over, but this takes up so much of your time that it's just like nobody else goes down into that corner of the basement. So who cares if it's still dirty from six months ago? Not that long ago, like three, four, maybe five months ago anyway. So I have to, I want to make sure that I take the time to clean it and get it ready for another round of starting seeds. And if you get this book, it will explain to you when you start your seeds, seeds and when you plant them out. So it's going to be like bed prepping time here very soon because you are in the middle of harvest, like heavy harvest, and you are going to have to start seeds for the next season. So you're always thinking ahead because if you wait until you're not busy harvesting, it's gonna be too late to do your cool flowers. And the cool flowers, the advantage to this is you will get blooms earlier in the spring. So, oh, sorry babies. So that's what is supposed to happen. Some people don't have the best luck. I have a friend who did, what did she do, feverfew. She did cool flowers as feverfew. And she also did spring sowing. Her spring feverfew ended up doing better than her cool flower feverfew. So I think it's just, you know, whatever works for you and trial and error. That's what you do. I'm yawning guys because this is, I need another cup of coffee. I'm gonna go get it. So I'm gonna go grab my coffee and I'm gonna start cleaning my basement and I'm gonna come back to you later this week and I'm gonna, bring you with me when I soil block and do all that stuff because um, you guys have been asking to show how I do that. All the supplies that I need for soil blocking, I'm going to put in this video on the link down below where I buy that stuff and um, let you guys know when we're gonna be doing it. It's gonna be this week because I can't wait any longer. It's the window of opportunity for cool flowers for me is closing, okay? And I'll explain more about that. And if you wanna get the details from the queen herself, Lisa Mason Ziegler, cool flowers. We'll see you next time, flower friends. Take care.